Let's keep calm and mother on. Mothering is way too important to do alone and way too serious to be serious all the time. My name is Christy Thomas, and I am here shoulder to shoulder with you, mothering and enjoying life together. This is the podcast where you can focus on being mindful and taking a deep breath with me and learning new things so you can pause and savor the amazing life you already have. Let's talk about peace. (laughs) Do you feel like it's peaceful these days? If you're listening to this live, it's October 9th in 2020, um, less than a month to the big 2020 U.S. elections. The country's had a rocky year. The world's had a rocky year. And I'm guessing, like most of us, like me, that you might not be feeling peaceful all the time. One of the reasons I started the Breathe With Me episodes earlier this year was I realized that I needed to chase peace. That yes, I can randomly find peace during my day. I can notice it and appreciate it and savor it. But if I make the time intentionally for activities that I know put me into that state of mind, that flow state of peace, that tranquility, the place where I just feel comforted and seen, especially um, I'm a person of faith. So the peace for me reminds me of being cradled by God. Right now, I am actively adding peace to my days. And I want to just take the time to encourage you to do the same. There is so much going on that we can't control. I can't control how other people define words in the news. I can't control the newscasters. I can't control what's said on debates. I can't control my kids. Not really, right? Like I get to guide my kids, but I'm not in control of them. I'm really only in control of me. That's the only being that I have autonomy over. And the reason I'm narrowing in on peace is because I took the time to think about how I want my house to feel. We've talked about this before on previous episodes. I think about the feeling that I want my kids to feel when they think about their childhood and how I want to walk into my house when I open the front door after being away. What's the feeling that I want to feel when I walk in? And Time after time after time, no matter what house I've lived in, I've wanted to feel peace when I come home. Yes, I want it to be a place where we can have fun and notice and celebrate joy, but I want my home to be a home of peace, that that soft spot to land. And since we're spending so much time at home nowadays, it's important to make time for it because the things that we want to happen, right, we have to actually schedule. So how can you add peace to your days? I've talked to a couple people and I'll start with their ideas and then I can give you mine. My mom says she adds peace to her days by writing in a journal that I gave her. And then she also reads a devotional. She likes to go through her prayer list. And then she finds time to walk in the woods or around her neighborhood. And that brings her peace. When I've asked my mother-in-law before what brings her peace, it's prayer and walking and artwork, making things, creating more beautiful things for the world. And I asked some friends if I think that they have to find peace or if peace can just bubble up during the day. And I think it's both, right? You have to make time for peace. And when you allow yourself to see peace by making time for it, you notice it more. It's like when you're buying that new car, right? Have you ever wanted to buy a new car? 
and you pick out the car you want and all of a sudden you see that type of car everywhere. Now, I'm a mom. I drive a Honda Odyssey minivan. There are, it seems like, endless Honda Odyssey minivans out there. Um, But when we were switching and getting our new van back in May 2019, I started noticing more Honda Odysseys than I had ever noticed before because we were switching from a different brand. Now, right, I, I drive a Honda Odyssey so they don't pop out at me anymore because I've made space for that in my driveway. But initially, when you're starting to notice things, you'll notice that thing more because you're looking for it. You're anticipating it. The world is always moving towards chaos. This is not like a big spiritual belief, even though you can definitely see this, I think, in the spiritual world. But this is also just a belief in physical science and chemistry. It's called entropy. (laughs) Let me read you the definition in case you haven't taught science in a while. Okay? Entropy is the lack of order or predictability of gradual decline into disorder. Okay? This just happens in our days. A gradual decline into disorder. How do I find peace? I'm going to give you four ways that I find peace. Here you go. Number one, I move my body. I intentionally move my body every single day. Yes, I still have my running streak going, but I also intentionally move my body later in the day. I try to do yoga or stretches. The second activity burst that I try to do, the afternoon one, is completely random. If the weather is still good where I am, I will go swimming when I can. It doesn't matter what it is, but I try to move my body. I move my body. I appreciate it. The second way I find peace is to take a deep breath. I put my hand on my heart or put my hand on my head and I just notice my breath again. I breathe in. I choose the word, I breathe in peace. And then I exhale stress. I wire that phrase into my day. I breathe in peace. I am a peacemaker. I breathe in peace. Number three, I find peace when I'm sitting down with my kids. Cuddling on the couch, reading a book. When I'm with the people that I love, safely doing something Preferably non-digital, no TV, no video game, but reading something, appreciating art together, making art together, having an amazing meal together. I find peace in being together because we're not made to be alone, right? I tell you that every week. We're not made to mother alone. Mothering is too important to do it alone. Well, (laughs) being a family is too important to be alone, I find time to be with my family in a way where my heart feels like it's together with them. Number four, I find peace by making sure I protect my sleep. There is nothing that leads to an unpeaceful Christie, an anxious Christie, a Christie that's leading towards chaos and disorder than not getting enough sleep. I protect my sleep I give myself permission to take a nap if I need it. I make a cutoff for caffeine so I can protect my sleep in the evening. Sometimes I get that second wind after my kids go to bed and I just want to stay up because it's quiet and that really feeds me. But I know that the sleep will feed me more for the next day. That whatever task I'm going to work on when it's quiet in the house or TV show, or book I'm going to read is far less important 
than a good night's sleep. I hope that you know you're not alone right now. The world is full of noise and chatter and it's pushing and pulling you in a way. It's pushing and pulling me in a way where it's easy to notice loneliness and discontent and division. It's easy to forget that I have the choice to turn towards peace. But just like I said, when you want to buy a new car and then suddenly you notice that car everywhere, when you make the effort of turning towards peace, you'll find those moments in your day more naturally. It will surprise you. We can be peacemakers together, one by one in our house. We can model to our kids that we have control over how we feel. You have control. In this year of all years, right? I think it's super important that we remind ourselves and we model it for our kids and teach them explicitly that we have control over the influences that we let in, the things that might disturb our peace. I have noticed how much calmer my days are since I signed out of social media in September. The flow of my days is calmer and peaceful. I have more time for things of higher value to me. Now I do miss that space and I'll log in when it's my birthday. I'll be making some new patterns and we'll talk about that here too in another podcast. In case someone hasn't told you specifically, you don't have to log in to Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. You don't have to read the big newspapers. You can find other ways to get news. You can make informed decisions. And you can protect your peace and tranquility. Now for today's self-care, I want you to go try one of the things that I listed. The logging out of social media and choosing which news you're going to listen to critically with discernment, looking up words, deciding if they're truthful or not. That's number five. It's a bonus tip. But there were four other ideas before this and then some from my mom and my mother-in-law. Try them. See what works for you. Now for the family fun idea. Oh my goodness, it's October. And so this week we had tacos on Tuesday, lawnmower tacos, one of my kids' favorite meals. And then we had our first batch of apple nachos. If you have never made apple nachos, that is your family play idea this week. Slice up apples really thin, put some peanuts on there if you don't have a peanut allergy, sprinkles, caramel sauce, some whipped cream, and stack it all up like it's a plate of nachos, but with apples. It is something that we do almost only in the fall months, okay? I like to use Halloween or black and white sprinkles to really add that seasonal memory because I like making memories that are simple. Traditions that are simple are my jam. Well, remember, I am so glad you're here. You are exactly the right human we need in this moment. You're alive now for a very specific reason. You are the right mom for your kids and your kids are the right kids for you. Protect your peace and text this podcast to three friends. Leave a rating and review. If you leave a rating and review and I read it on air or mention your name, please either go to my website or email me. My email's in the show notes and I will send you an email back. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's keep calm and mother on.